Okay, so how do you make an introvert the protagonist of a story? In other words, how do you attach readers to a character whose life plays out in an endless series of excursions into their own selves? In the field of psychology, introverts often refer to people who are energized by a rich mental life or from more solitary activities. So this got me thinking: What if you could write a story that showed readers what it's like to be an introvert? A manga that realistically replicated that experience. Well, let's look at some examples first that I think fall short of this objective. You see, when we think of the most pronounced introverts in anime and manga, you might bring up series like Watamote or NHK, which feature main characters who are socially anxious and isolated, too much, in fact, for their own good. The main character in Welcome to NHK, for instance, is an example of hokokimori. A social phenomenon known in Japan, where teenagers and young adults withdraw from society and lock themselves at home. For the characters in NHK and Watamote, social anxiety and isolation lead them into delusions and angst, which is often played for comedy. So fast! You look so cute with rice stuck on your face. Guy girl bonding, sharing love stories, and braiding hair. We travel size conditioner voice coming into the room. Sexual tension between classmates. Stay calm. That's still a whole year away. What are we doing today? Was that a conspiracy too? And that? And this? And this? Even that? And that song? Are they all conspiracies? Is that it? Now, although these tormented psyches are hypnotically engaging, this isn't really what most introverts are like. Plenty of us are quite okay with navigating the social world. Plus, this type of writing sacrifices character appeal for drama and humor. The headspace of Kuroki and Sato are often so congested with stress and fantasies that we would never want to be them, even though we might find pieces of ourselves there. Spotlighting the exceptional negative experiences of some introverts misses entirely all the joy that they experience in the secret life of their minds and selves. So, what about another anime trope, the kudere, a type of character who tends to express very few words and emotions, moving through life with a calm and controlled comportment? It's an incredibly entertaining and endearing anime trope. But whereas socially anxious types at least present rich and eventful psychologies, kudere's refrain entirely from inviting the readers into their inner world. Only in spare moments do we get to know what they're thinking. So neither of these two character types render the introverted personality all that enticing and accessible. I was just about to think that it was impossible to present introversion in all of its glory, until I read this manga. Now, unless you are a manga enthusiast like me, you've probably never heard of Teleworks Yotabanashi. Heck, it's ranked the 9,145th most popular on my anime list. All things considered, Teleworks is a pretty modest work, except for a very special thing that it offers: the charming, omnipresent first-person narrator. You see, in literature, the choice to use first-person or third-person point of view is relatively easy to tell. Does the storyteller rely on pronouns I or us, or do they use proper names and third-person pronouns? In manga, however, things are a bit more muddy. It's nearly impossible to come across a manga that never uses first-person narration, interspersed with a third-person objectivity of illustration and dialogue. But Teleworks is very obviously written from the first-person point of view. How do we know? Well, just look at the first chapter of the series. In seven pages plus a two-page color spread, the chapter follows a salaryman's quest to redecorate his apartment into a neat and pleasant space for remote work. What's striking is that the plot in the first chapter is entirely held up by one character. There's no dialogue, no other people to interact with, no outdoor activity, just one man and his apartment. But the introversion goes further. Except for the last page, every single text in this chapter is written with a first-person voice enclosed in narration boxes. By crowding the pages with the main character's voice and only the main character's voice, mangaka Yamada Kintetsu wants you to follow Mitsuhashi's story in exactly the way he would tell it. 
It's not an accident that Yamada uses square panels for the narration. In manga, there's typically four ways to inscribe a character's thoughts, with round bubbles, rectangular panels, radial lines, or leaving the text alone. Compared to thought bubbles, rectangular panels give off the vibe of greater objectivity, as if a disembodied voice was telling the story from the future or from outside of the story. Thought bubbles, by contrast, usually frame thoughts that are embedded in the situation itself, such as the main character Mitsuhashi's desire here to go to the convenience store. So what the square panels do is turn the main character's inner thoughts into the story itself. The panels transpose a subjective voice onto objective reality, hijacking the entire manga panel and remolding it into a narrator's lens onto the world. Now, not every chapter of Teleworks is as filled with square panels like this, but the first chapter establishes a tone that never quite falters. Narration boxes always bookend any social interaction in order to provide the main character's take on the events that transpired. Now, this type of subjective narration doesn't capture the entirety of introversion. In fact, both introversion and extroversion have many faces, and it's better to think that they appear in unique mixtures among all walks of life. Introversion simply means that you direct your energy inward in one way or another. In the Myers-Briggs personality indicator, there's something called introverted sensing. It refers to a mental preference for relating the present moment to past experiences, which are vividly and intricately recalled. In other words, people with introverted sensing like to work with long-term memories, whereas extroverted sensors prefer to live in the present. So whenever Yamada-sensei lets her main character speak directly to the reader, like in this panel, it really is as if an introverted censor was detailing a story from his memory. This is especially striking when you consider the fact that in the 12 chapters that are published so far, the perspective has never shifted from the main character to anyone else. We never see any scene where Mitsuhashi isn't there. In most mangas with more intricate plots and large cast of characters, it's really hard to tell a story without shifting the focal lens from one character to another, at least sometimes. But Teleworks follows Mitsuhashi incessantly. It's a manga told in the first person through and through. The result is a plot that is modest, a cast that is small. You know, a story doesn't need sprawling narratives and armies of characters to be charming. Or at least that's what an introvert would say. As far as I know, there are very few other mangas that nail the introverted personality. March Comes In Like a Lion comes beautifully close to perfection. Look at this page, where the artist Umi no Chika illustrates the main character's descent from daily life down into the depths of concentration when he plays professional shogi or Japanese chess. Umi no Sensei often uses metaphors to deliver ideas creating an atmospheric sense of introspection and deep feeling. Teleworks, on the other hand, takes a different approach. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned how introversion is the proclivity to gain energy from mental life and solo activity. Well, reading manga itself is an act that engages the reader's energy. If you resonate with Teleworks, that probably means that the rise and fall of Mitsuhashi's energy coincided with your own. The forward momentum of Mitsuhashi's life between the pages carries the reader's own momentum to turn those pages. Teleworks doubles down on the essential introvertedness of the act of reading itself. And in my experience, that's a delightful journey to go on.